On a more personal level, I do believe that Dr. Bhatti saved my life. He was always there and I never had to wait more than a day to get an email response from him. Dr. Bhatti gave me back my life and for that, I'm eternally grateful. Hello. So today we're going to talk about uh, the hair lines. Uh, I'll give you a ready reckoner of the hair lines that look natural. At the same time, they look appealing and most of the patients should consider that every hairline does not suit their face. The hairline has to be custom cut to the amount of hair loss that you have, donor site availability, and the future balding that you're going to encounter in the years to come. Hairlines are very important because uh, there is no other thing about hair transplant that can affect your psyche, your body image, and your life in many ways you cannot imagine. A hairline that is ravaged by male pattern baldness or vandalized by a cheap hair transplant is very difficult to cope with by a vast majority of patients. In this presentation, I will take you through all the hairlines that are suited to a particular balding pattern, age and graft availability. You should remember that you should grow into your hairline rather than grow out of it with age. This is a very important fact to know. And if you understand this in this presentation, that is half the battle won in your hair restoration surgery that you're planning ahead. If you're in your 20s or in your 30s, first of all, you're very vulnerable because you have a problem which is causing you a great deal of anxiety. Therefore, you are looking for a solution and you are not rational. So you will be very naive and you will tend to think that this man is going to solve your problem. He does know you're vulnerable. He does not care. If, let me prove it, if he cared about your satisfaction, since he knows what I just told you, your vulnerability, this is what he would tell you. This is what he must tell you. He must tell you this. You are 25. You are 30. You are 35. You have begun to lose your hair. If I give you a procedure now, you are going to need future procedures. My procedure that you are seeking is never going to solve your problem because you will continue to lose your hair. And in fact, if you don't realize this, what I do to you not only will not alleviate your problem, but it very may well turn you into a freak show because your hair is going to look much worse than it ever would have if you just naturally continue to lose your hair. The purpose of this video is to give a quick reference to potential clients as to what hairline will suit them the most. You should know that one hairline does not suit everybody. Bring to me a patient and I will tell you what hairlines will suit his face and what hairlines will, in the times to come, in the years to come, continue to look natural on his head at all ages with all developing balding patterns. So this is where the uh, farsightedness of the surgeon in consultation with the objectives of the patient comes into play. When a patient comes to us, he has mostly no idea of hairline design. And it is more so in the young patients. The young age group needs to be guided patiently since this age group more than any other would be prone to impractical hairline designs, which at times would be outlandish. So a good half hour consultation the day prior to the surgery is what should be offered to explain your plan to the patient and to rationally incorporate the patient's objectives and aspirations so he is happy and at the same time we do not test the limits of propriety of hairline design principles. The design of a hairline is the most artistic part of the whole procedure. A hairline reflects the racial type, the age, wisdom of a person. A poorly planned hairline can ruin the result of an otherwise satisfactory hair transplant. In most people during early adulthood, the hairline has regressed enough to uncover the frontalis or the forehead muscle. If you were to make the folds of the forehead prominent by looking up, you would see that your hairline starts just a little higher than the point where the muscle boundary ends. In monkeys, for example, it is not so and therefore when they make facial expressions, their hairline stands on end. This animation of the hairline can also be seen in some children who have naturally low set hairlines. 
The best way to plan a hairline is freehand design. Nature has, like in most of her wonderful creations, made the human face asymmetric to enhance its beauty. If an amateur draws his own hairline and then measures it from the reference points of the peaks of the eyebrows and the outer canthus of the eyes, he would appreciate that what he thought was symmetrical was much too lopsided. This is because the reference points too are asymmetrical. In my practice, I mark the hairline first with the native hair unshaven and then discuss the hairline with the patient when the harvesting is complete. I have always found that in the second instance, the visual landmarks with which the patient saw his earlier hairline have been erased because they've been shaven and the patient suggests changes to be made at that moment. This is common and this is a trap no wise hair transplant surgeon would like to fall into. However, there is a difference between a asymmetrical hairline, which is planned by default, and on the other hand, a lopsided hairline. I would say that asymmetry should lie within the range of two to three millimeters and not more, or else they become unappealing to the untrained eye. So these are some principles of hairline design. And if you drop me a mail, I will shoot you many more examples of how hairlines are designed and how we do in our clinic. Thank you very much for watching.